fourth objective is to discuss the ankle and foot osteology, and we'll start with the tibia and fibula, and those landmarks that are indicated are tibial tuberosity being the first one, which serves as the attachment point for the quadriceps femoris muscle group. Our medial malleolus, that is uh, the most inferior projection of the tibia, forms this medial part of the mortise joint of your um, hinge ankle joint, the tibiotalar joint. There's the head of the fibula. This serves as an attachment for the biceps femoris, one of the hamstrings, but it also is where the articulation, the proximal articulation for the tibia and fibula occur. Just below it is the neck of the fibula. And this is important because the common fibular nerve wraps right around this neck of the fibula prior to bifurcating to its superficial and deep branches. And whenever you have a nerve that's snug as a bug in a rug right up against the bone and that bone fractures, it has a, um, a higher risk of being injured. Um, going way down, there's our lateral malleolus. This forms the lateral portion of the um, mortise joint of your tibiotalar joint. Um, then tethering the tibia to the fibula is this interosseous membrane. It is a syn um, uh, fibrous syndesmosis joint, and it keeps the tibia and fibula anchored together by this dense irregular collagenous connective tissue and helps uh, provide a great bit, a deal of stability to not only the tibia and fibula, but also to the uh, ankle joint. Um, let's talk about now the tarsals um, making the, the, these irregular bones that make up a good chunk of the foot, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. Starting with our tarsals, there are seven of them, and these tarsal bones um, are much larger than their homologous uh, carpal bones in the hand, but they have to bear a whole lot more weight. So first there's our talus. The talus uh, articulates with the tibia and bears the brunt of all the force of the body as it comes down um, uh, onto the foot. Below that is the largest of the tarsal bones, the calcaneus or your heel bone. That's where the um, gastroc and soleus attach or your Achilles tendon attaches. Um, we have the navicular bone that it's just in front of the talus, our large cuboid bone just in front of the calcaneus, and then these three cuneiforms getting their name for wedge-shaped, a medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, and a lateral cuneiform. It is not necessary for you to know every articulation for each of these tarsal bones. It is important for you to be able to identify them on, a, on an illustration, on the skeleton, and also on radiographic imaging. Our five metatarsals are meta, which means to the end of. We have our seven tarsals, and these ones are to the end of them, or distal to them. And these metatarsals form a good portion of the arches of our foot. And the first metatarsal articulates with the um, halysis or your great toe, and then they go out from two, three, four, until five being the most lateral. Now the heads of these metatarsals, the distal portion, help form much of the stability of our foot, where the calcaneus is one part of a, think of it like a three-legged stool, is one leg, and then the head of the first and the head of the fifth metatarsal is other two legs. We then have our 14 phalanges, and um, uh, we have number one, your the first phalange, your digit one, known as your halysis, um, or the great toe. And then digit two, three, four, and five going out laterally are the lesser toes or the lesser digits. And for the great toe, there is a proximal and a distal with a interphalangeal joint between. For the lesser toes, there's a proximal and a middle phalange and a distal phalange with both a proximal interphalangeal joint and a more distal interphalangeal joint. Uh, the arches of the foot are formed by the tarsals and metatarsals to help with absorption of shock of being a bipedal animal, where we've got our medial longitudinal arch is higher, and the la lateral longitudinal arch is more lateral, but they both basically course from the back of the foot to the metatarsals, to the head of those metatarsals, and uh, forming, in a sense, like the way igloos... Uh, parts of an igloo come together so that they form an arch, but the way that they form, there's more stability as you step down. Our medial longitudinal arch here in green courses from medial to lateral. Um, it's even though this picture shows all along those tarsals, which is true, 
the brunt of it occurs at the base of each of those me uh, five metatarsals. On the f plantar surface, or the bottom of the foot, we have this big, dense fascia called the plantar aponeurosis that arises from the calcaneus and then courses forward and knits itself into those five digits, and it also sends some septae off to the sides. Um, very, very tough, and it helps give support, <coughs> support and stability to our uh, longitudinal arches. And so in this picture, it shows a medial view of the right foot. There we have our plantar aponeurosis, and it's supporting that pink line, which is our medial longitudinal arch, though it will be doing both medial and lateral longitudinal arches. And those longitudinal arches are supported by the plantaris apen plantar aponeurosis, number two, the long plantar ligament, and number three, the spring ligament. And collectively, in addition, it's got some support from some of the long tendons of the leg. Um, but what happens is ye these yellow arrows represent the force of when you take a step. And when you take a step, and basically what happens is you see that plantar aponeurosis, it tightens. And by tightening, it helps keep the arch up. And so um, that's one of the functions of this plantar aponeurosis is it maintains the longitudinal arches. Another thing that it does is and you see at the bottom of the plantar aponeurosis in blue and then the pink is showing that longitudinal arch. Watch what happens to the great toe. When the great toe extends, look what happens to the arch. It gets bigger and tightens that plantar aponeurosis. So toe extension produces what's called a windless mechanism. By extending the toe, it pulls the calcaneus towards the um, heads of the metatarsals where that plantar aponeurosis, and by doing that, it makes the arch higher. Now, why would that be significant? Why would you want to be able to do this? Well, we take a look at this picture, and I recognize we're looking at right feet, and this illustration shows a left foot, so I apologize. But that left foot, you see at the heel strike, and as soon as the calcaneus hits, look what happens in the picture below. The great toe extends. It lifts off the ground so that when finally the person then puts all the force down on that leg, by, by having that great toe extend, it increases the arch so when you finally put your weight down on that foot, it gives some more stability.